हाय रायनी गुड मॉर्निंग हाय गुड मॉर्निंग थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग अर्ली या या थैंक्स फॉर द या थैंक्स फॉर द क्लासेस सो डू वी हैव द क्लास टुडे yeah we need a uh, maybe you were informed like uh, you guys are going to have a uh demo but this will be exactly a class oh um so so like i have taken a power pack package from excelity wherein okay. this uh, advanced excel sql and power bi is included in that so do you okay. suggest me to first go through sql and then join the power bi classes uh i would say yes ma'am but uh, let me check with the front office team yeah yeah because then... i am following with them from quite a long time Uh, I okay. finished my advanced classes in uh, app by end of I think no first or second week of December only. But oh, uh, okay. like say, after that, I did not hear anything from them. Recently, they shared me that we are going to start this Power BI sessions. If you want, you can join. So if okay. you suggest me to first go through SQL, then means uh, uh, means I want to go step by step so that I understand each and everything very clearly because. i i have uh, joined this course uh, to uh, implement everything practically in my day to day life in my office it's not that just for certification or time pass i am learning this i have yeah. to learn this and implement in my day to day life sure uh, please give me some time ma'am so i'll check with front office team and i'll get back to you okay thank you so yeah you're welcome do we need to have etl knowledge uh, before joining the uh, sir your voice is very low uh, can you please loud yeah do we need to have etl knowledge also uh that's what we are going to discuss here sir can you see here i mean uh, if you see on my screen yeah we yeah. have a section here which we call get and transform data basically this is nothing but your power query sir okay using power query yeah so we are going to perform etl activity okay so now for few people it may sound little strange but even this power query is available in excel also so whatever the transformations we are going to perform in power bi with power query even you can perform the same activities in excel also so if you come to data tab in data tab we have a group here which is called get and transform data this is what i am referring by etl so now if you come here you can connect this excel application to all these sources by connecting excel to all these sources you can extract the data once you extract it how we can transform it while we are doing the transformations how we need to follow certain steps that's what we will discuss and once we are done with all required transformations how we can load that data into other application maybe that could be excel or that could be power bi or any other application so etl we are going to discuss sir we'll be spending good amount of time on it and here we will talk about m language also which is very much required mashup language so we are going to talk about two things here in power bi one is m language and another one is dax yeah now some of you might be thinking what is this data modeling guys just give me a quick glance of it so already i opened a sample dashboard which we have created now if you see on the screen on the right hand side there is a pane called data so here what we have done here is there is a table called customers and there is one more co table called date table products ship mode sorting transactions so we will talk about this all measures a bit later guys now if i take this i have 1 2 3 4 5 
So to work with this uh, dashboard or to create this dashboard, we used five tables here. Now, what we have done here is, so there is a specific view, which we call as model view. If you come to model view, So these are the tables, what we have loaded into Power BI, guys. Yeah. Now, this is what I was referring. One is customers, date table, transactions, ship mode sorting, products, and people. Now, if you see here, all these tables are connected with one table with another. And here you see one, and here you see a star symbol. We will talk about this, what exactly we mean by this arrow and why do we have this star? What do we call this? We will talk about all these things. So when I mean data modeling, this is the part which I'm talking about, guys. Basically, here we have created a relationship. While creating this relationship, we talked about one to many, many to one. So we will discuss all these things, guys. So once you load your data into Power BI, this is very important to create the data modeling. So this data modeling is really, really important in real time, guys. That's where here we get to hear two more words, not two, exactly. So uh, we use a specific word here, schema. There we talk about snowflake schema. We talk about star schema. So basically, how you create your data model, there we use those concepts, guys. Yep, so this is about data modeling. Then if I move on, so why I asked everyone that, or why I said Excel is mandate. Now, if you are familiar in Excel, how to create a dashboard, you can easily replicate the same in Power BI guys. For example, let me ask you a very simple question. If I want to show a comparison, what is the best chart guys? Now, if you come to Excel, if you come to insert, there is a group called charts. In charts, we have so many charts here. Uh, let me pick up something. Hello. Yeah, I don't have any data. So let me take some data, something like this. And let me go to insert. Let me go to more column charts. If you take Excel itself, guys, we have all these charts. Yeah. Now, very simple question. If I want to show a comparison, what is the best chart, guys? I think we can or, take line chart. Okay. Line chart or bar chart. Bar chart is... Okay. So can if we want to show a comparison, do you prefer line chart? Okay, let me put it very straight, guys. If you want to show a trend, their line chart is the best. The best example is, uh, you may see stock price, stock price of a company. So based on a time, when you want to show the trend, there they use line chart. But if you want to go with the comparison, we go with column chart. Yep. Then when you want to talk about density, there, yep. So you can use a tree map. So here you can talk about density. And when you want to compare a two weird values, their combo chart is better. Now, people who have familiarity with Excel, they can figure out all these things very easily, guys. So that is the reason I said Excel and SQL are mandatory to get into Power BI. Okay, so with that, let me close here and let me close this up. And let me close this also. People who have already experience with Power BI guys, can somebody tell me how to open Power BI application?
Corby desktop. Corby desktop. Uh, let me minimize my screen, sir. So, can you see? Uh, do I have Corby desktop? Yes, sir. Absolutely. If you come here, I mean, if you come to search bar and if you say Power BI desktop. So this is an application what we are going to use for uh, class purpose, guys. So if you don't have Power BI desktop, you can go to Microsoft website. You can download it. So Power BI desktop is free, guys. Yeah, you can download it and keep it ready for the sessions. Now, if you click on it, then you can launch Power BI application. So it takes a bit of time. Please be patient. And make sure that, guys, uh, don't use or don't open SQL Server and Power BI at a time. So because uh, Power BI consumes your RAM a lot, so it becomes very slow if you open multiple applications at the same time. Uh, sir, I have a question. No. Yes, sir, please. Uh, what's the difference between like, you know, uh, Power BI and the Tableau? That's a good question, sir. Please give me a few more minutes, sir. I'll answer that. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Now, the moment you install Power BI desktop, guys, and if you come here, this is the first screen what you get. Now, you can clearly see this. This is Power BI desktop. And you can start working from here or else you can close this window. Then this is the user interface, what we have for Power BI application. Now, if you observe this, guys, it looks pretty similar to Excel. How you have Home tab, Insert tab, the same way. Uh, how you have Home tab and Insert tab in Excel, the same way we have same kind of interface in Power BI also. Okay, now here, first thing what you can do is, if you want to work with Power BI, you need to get some data into Power BI. So, that's where we start here uh, from get data. Now, if you click on get data, so here you can connect Power BI application to all these guys. Now, let me click on more. It will open another window. So exactly, we can connect Power BI to all these things, guys. Yeah, you can see this. Most of the applications you can connect Power BI. Now, what I exactly meant by connecting. So now, for example, let's say I have my data in a server or let's say I have my data in a folder. Yeah, how to get data from folder. Let's say in a folder, you have 10 files. How you get the data from 10 files into Power BI. So we create a connection and we will get the data or you can connect to access database, you can connect to SQL database or Oracle database. By connecting to those things, you get the data into Power BI. After getting that data, so we call that as extract, we do transformations. So now here, let me take one thing, guys. I'll go with Excel workbook. Let me say connect. So here, basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to connect uh, Excel with Power BI, guys. So here, what I'm doing is let me go to the first Excel file, what I have here, super source. So I selected this as my source. And now let me say open. So then what happens? A connection will be created between Power BI and Excel. So then. Here, you will be moved to one more screen. Yeah, this is a screen what we call as a navigator, guys. Now, here, what it is showing is, it is showing all the uh, data or all the options what you have in this file, which is Superstore Excel file. In this, you have orders table, then you have customers, orders, people, products, and transactions. Can somebody tell me what's the difference between orders table and orders? Does anyone have idea, guys? Very important point. We must know this.
should I use orders or should I use orders table? I think this orders table in Excel, uh, we name that table as orders table. Okay, that's true. Orders table is the table for, table for needed and uh, orders is the not table for it is not a table. Okay. Yes. In other guess, guys? What you said is true, ma'am. Any other guess? Okay. Let me talk order. about this. Guys. Yeah, sorry. Somebody saying something. Order is a multiple uh, 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 database and mm -hmm. order table is uh, simulated to pivot like. Pivot. Okay. Yeah, let's come here, guys. Here we have two things. One is orders and another one is orders table. So it's quite simple, guys. Now, if you order. observe this icon, yeah. Yeah, order table is uh, clean data. Orders table, orders is uh, non-clean data. Non-clean, okay. Names. That's also true, but uh, we have a small difference here. Mm -hmm. If you observe these icons, guys, now this is a table and this this looks like Excel sheet, guys. Now, when you see here, by looking at the icon itself, you can figure out which one is a table and which one is uh, a sheet. Now, my question is quite simple. If I want to load data, should I use orders table or should I use orders sheet? Orders table. Orders table, why? Because it is in table design and whenever we make any updates on the source data, it gets automatically updated. It gets automatically updated. Thank you so much. Now, this is what my question is, guys. Why are we preferring table? And what is the connection between data and table? Also, you might have observed that uh, when I showed you a Power BI dashboard, I mentioned that we have customers table, we have transactions table, we have people table. So I used all the all these words earlier. Now my question is quite simple: What is the connection between data and table? Uh, table have the headers, which we can use table it to identify the data, which we can use okay. to identify the data. Okay. You may say that in data we don't have headers. Uh, I think data the, is think more table. data built, and the table is a simulated. Table uh, is a simulate. Okay. I think table table has a structured data, whereas uh, uh, data is just a random figures. Right. Yes. Random figures. Okay. Okay. Now let's come here, sir. I hope you can see on my screen. Can I call this as table? Yes. I don't think. You don't think? Okay. Uh, when we, we click on the table, table design tab doesn't appear here. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I say partial, yes, it's a table, guys. But at the same time, I say it is not a table. Yeah. Sorry, if I'm sounding confused, let me come here. Based on the now, usage. Based on? Based on the usage, we can say that table. Okay, based on the usage, we can say that table. But here, I say it is table, sir. As a human being, for me, I consider this as a table. Why I'm saying this table? Now, like our friend mentioned, here what we have done is, we kept headers, under the headers, we kept respective data. Yeah. So when you want to store your data in more structured format, there the preferred mode is table. Yeah. If it is a table, it is like more structured. So for example, let's say I want to collect all your details. 
in that case, what I do first, I start with serial number. This is the first header I keep. Then I take your name. Then I try to collect your mobile number. Then I try to collect your email ID. So this is how I'm collecting your details. Now, when I say name, so here I have to enter the name. For example, let's say Excel. And here I have to enter the mobile number, something like this. I know this is not wrong. This is not correct. So, but if you enter a number here and if you enter the name here, that is not correct. So this is not structured. So why we are storing the data, whenever you want to store data, guys, we want to store it in a more structured format. There we use table. But now for me, as a human being, it looks like a table, but in Excel language, it is not a table, guys. So now this is the application what we are using. The name of the application is Excel. So here it should, it should consider this range as table. How do we do that is we come to home tab and we go to format as table. And if I take something like this, now this normal data will be converted to table. Yeah. Now here I say data one. Yeah. But here what I'm doing is I'm renaming this sheet as data. Now, here, the sheet name is data, but if I come to this table, I'm referring this entire table from here to here. Yeah, as, so sorry. I'm referring this entire table as I did not give a name, data one. Now, if you select this data from here to here, you can clearly see this guys. To this range, what we have done is we gave a name as data one. Now, the problem what happens, if you load the data from data sheet, not only this table will be loaded, along with this data, uh, I mentioned some text here. This text also will be loaded into Poppy guys. That is not correct. So here, what do we want to do is we want to load this table to Power BI. So that is the reason here, if you come to this screen, instead of using orders, yeah, I prefer to use orders mm -hmm. table. So now let me select orders table. So once you select this order table, so here you see three options, guys. One is load, second one is trans transform data, and third one is cancel. Now. When should we load? When should we use load? When should we use transform data? And when should we go for cancel? So first thing, you feel like you are 100% sure that there are no issues in the data and you want to load this data into Power BI, then you can directly click on load. But this does not happen always, guys. Sometimes we may have some data anomalies. In that case, it's better First, you always transform your data, then you load it into Power BI. So here, my suggestion is quite simple. Don't load it directly, guys. So please go to transform data. Now, if you click on transform data, then one more screen will be opened here, guys. Yeah. We call the screen as Power Query Editor. So now, Power BI consists of three things. One is Power Query, then Power Pivot, then we have one more thing which we call as Power. Yeah. These three components together we call as Power BI, guys. So using Power BI, what we do, we perform ETL. Then using Power Pivot, here what we do, uh, we prepare visualizations. Yeah. Then once you prepare the visualizations, even in Power Pivot, you take care of data modeling also. Yeah. Then 
once you have prepared visualizations, how effectively you place your visualizations in a report view and how you can publish it, all those things we discuss in Power View, guys. Now, Power BI is the combination of these three components, Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power View. Now, if I come here, so this is a screen where you perform all your data transformations, guys. Now, if you see here, uh, the options what you have, these are pretty useful for data transformation purpose. For example, let me give you a very simple example. Whoever is familiar with SAT or whoever is familiar with databases, when you download data from database, you get some unnecessary rows and unnecessary columns. In that case, if you want to remove rows or if you want to remove columns, you can use these two options, guys. Yeah. So once you perform that activity, whatever you do, everything will be recorded here. So you do it once, next time you don't have to repeat all those steps, guys. So here, people who are coming from macros background, they know the pain. Even if you want to do a small activity, uh, writing VBA code is not a simple thing. But here, when you are familiar with Power Query, you can do automation also, guys. You can perform some of the automation tasks here. So if you learn Power Query, that will help you in Power BI and that will help you in Excel also. Now, let me show you a very simple example. Here, if I move on, for example, now, if you see here, so we have row ID. So here, the data type, what we have for row ID is number. Then we have order ID, that is text. So here, it is a alphanumeric. So here, we have the data type as text. Now, let's check whether we have correct data type for each column or not. Order date, here it replicates calendar icon. So here it is in cal uh, date data type. Now, if you move on, you can check for each and every column. Yeah. For me, this data looks okay. But here, let me do a small transformation that is, for example, if you take this postal code, right now, it is in number format. But using postal code, we don't perform any aggregations, guys. When I say aggregations, we don't perform sum or average or count, all those things we don't perform postal code on postal code. So now, let me change this data type for postal code. In that case, what I do, let me click on it. If I click on it, right now, it is in whole number. From whole number, I'm converting this to text. So let me click on text. Yeah, so it is asking, would you like to add a new step or would you like to replace the current? So I'll talk about this also because here I'm changing the column type. So let me say replace current. Now here, earlier it was right aligned, but now it is left aligned. Now you can see this here, which is change type. So here data type has been changed. Yes. So whatever you do, everything will be recorded here in Power Query. So next time, when you do this activity, you don't have to repeat all these steps again. So that it saves a lot of your time. Yeah, now once you feel like your data looks good, what you can do is you can close this Power Query Editor screen. So for that, what you will do, you will come to Home tab. So here, if you expand this dropdown, which is Close and Apply, you see three options, guys. One is Close and Apply, and another one is Apply, and third one is Close. Yeah, you just want to apply the changes and you want to close this, then you can click on Close and Apply. So let me do that because I've done bit of transformations. I say Close and Apply. Now what happens? The data will be loaded here to Power BI, guys. Now, if you observe the screen, it is saying that 344 rows loaded. Yeah. On right hand side, what you can see is you can see the table name here. Can you see this orders table? 
and these are the headers what we have in order statement. Now here, what do we do? So if you want to prepare a visual, so we call this white place as canvas. In canvas, we take a visualization or maybe a table or anything, whatever you want to do. For example, let's say, let me take a stacked column chart. So I'll take a stacked column chart. I selected the visualization from here. Then let me come here. I say category. Then what do I do? Let me take profit. Now, if you see here, what we have done here is we have created a visualization. Basically, we had this data in Excel. From there, we loaded this data into Power BI. And using that data, we created a small visualization here. So let me take a pause here and see if there are any questions. This is uh, like more similar to Excel. Here in Power BI, we have skipped the step of creating pivot tables. Same thing we can do in Excel also, right? Uh, but to create this kind of visualization, we need to have a pivot table there. Absolutely. True. First, you have to create a summary on the data. Once you create hmm. the summary, then only you can create your visualization in Excel. Hmm. But here, it is same same kind of thing we are doing here. Even we are playing with headers here. Can you see this? Yeah. So we just selected it and based on your data type. So here, what Power BI did is it's very clever. It performed the aggregation. Yeah. Now the same thing you see here. I mean, can you see this here? We took mm -hmm. category, then we took sum of profit. So I mean, people who are coming from Excel, they can understand this, guys. Sum of profit and category. So on x-axis, we plotted the categories. On y-axis, we plotted sum of profit. That's it. So here my point is quite simple, guys. Working with Power BI is damn easy, guys. Really, really easy. Any other questions or anything else you want to discuss, guys? In this how to apply the data labels. So how to show the values on this chart. Are you talking about this one, sir? Ah, yes. Yeah. So we will discuss all those things, sir. For that, uh, you have to give me some more time. We will go step by step. Okay. okay. Yeah. We call this as tooltip. We will uh, discuss all these things. Okay. And not only that, can you see here, we are not able to see the text here. It's quite small. So how to format this? We will talk about all these things. So basically today, uh, what I'm trying to show you is how we can connect Excel with Power BI and how we can start the journey. That's what the plan, what I had said. That's what I did so far. But for that, everyone must have Power BI desktop, guys. If you have... Power BI desktop in your laptop, that's quite fine. If you don't have it, then please download it and install it, guys. Keep it ready. Because from day one, we are going to work practically. So I request everyone to join the sessions on your laptop so that whatever we discuss, uh, parallel you can practice that along with me. Okay. And second thing, so we are going to share a folder with you guys. So this folder will be shared with you. Uh, not this. Let me close it up. Yeah, this one. This folder will be shared with you. You will have all necessary files in this folder. Yeah, you can use this uh, for class purpose. Okay, now let me open one screen here.
yeah people who are coming from excel background they really want to have a quick comparison between excel and power bi so this file talks about all the things guys so this is a straight comparison between excel and power bi yeah i'll share this file also with you you can go through this and uh, let me know if you have any questions guys in excel yes some sir. data loaded uh, entered after that we can uh, close it and open it in power bi how we can close it same thing you just save it with your custom name uh then you can close it so whenever you want that same dashboard uh if you want that you can always go back and open it so very oh. simple you come here same interface you have sir can you see this save as mm -hmm. you can give your custom name and you can save it at a particular location and from there you can open it up whenever you require again so need not to go again desktop uh, app uh but eventually you are even if you want to open that existing file you have to open power bi desktop that is the application what you are using mm. but you don't have to open blank application instead directly you can open that uh, dashboard okay okay This is what I was talking about, guys. Publish, yeah. The main difference is publish this report online in Power BI service. So this is a major difference what we have what we have between Excel and Power BI. Now, for example, let's say I prepared a dashboard in Excel. If I want to share it with my stakeholders, let's say I'm working with one of the MNCs, and if I want to share the dashboard with my stakeholders who are sitting in different different countries. what will i do is i will send the whole excel file then my stakeholders who are sitting in different countries they can access the dashboard but if it is power bi what we do we will create a dedicated space for that that's what we call as power bi service in in power bi service what we do we uh, place the dashboard what we prepared in a particular location and we give access to all the people who want to have access or who want to uh, use the dashboard guys so in that case what do you do you don't share the entire file with the data you just say share your dashboard we can set the restrictions there there is a major difference between excel and power bi so there what do you do a link will be created you just share that link with your stakeholders so they can access the dashboard okay now one of our friends asked me difference between tableau and power bi yeah if you ask me what is the difference between tableau and power bi yeah generally people say that both are visualization applications but i never agree to this word guys they are not visualization applications indeed they are bi tools anyone has idea what is bi it's a business business intelligence business tool. intelligence tool. absolutely thank you so then what is the difference between uh, business intelligence tools and visualization applications business intelligence tools are reporting tools okay then uh, what are visualization applications uh we have to represent through the visualization okay it's quite simple guys Isn't... when you say visualization applications you can prepare nice charts yeah you prepare a nice chart and you send it to higher management that's not enough guys so ultimately why we are using the visualization applications is you want to present your data in a better manner so that will help the management to take a better decision so it should support decision making now if it is visualization application 
he just shared a nice chart but you can't count, come to a conclusion or you can't arrive at decision but bi tools they will certainly help you to take some necessary actions guys for example let's say my sales are low yeah now using visualization application you you can present it you can make the users to understand that the sales are low but if you want to improve your sales what you must do that you can't do with visualizations guys so what the difference between visualization applications and bi tools bi tools certainly will help you for a better decision making so now tableau and power bi both are bi tools guys don't use the word as visualization application that's not correct so both are bi tools yeah but why people are running after power bi why not tableau because first thing cost yeah so when it comes to cost less so, yeah yes sir for power bi it less Less cost. Yeah, Power BI, it Power is BI less. has a free desktop one and Tableau has that they have the license to be made to take. And the cost okay. is expensive compared to Power BI. Yeah, here I'm not talking about Power BI desktop. I'm talking about Power BI Pro license. Wherein you can publish your dashboard with your stakeholders. Now, if you want to take the Pro license, I mean, for Tableau, the license cost per user, I mean, if you are going with individual uh, uh, user wise, you have to pay $30 per user. Wherein Power BI, you have to pay $10 per user. Now, let's imagine there are 100 employees in an organization. You can imagine how much you are saving if you use Power BI. And not only that, Power BI is Microsoft application. So it has better integration with other office applications. Because we have so many products from Microsoft and most of the organizations use them. So here we have a better integration. That is the reason people are using Power BI a lot instead of Tableau. So first thing is cost. I definitely agree. Second thing is better integration. And third thing, yeah. So now the major difference, what happened? Tableau targeted like Fortune 500 companies, guys. Yeah, these Fortune 500 companies, they have enormous data. For example, let's say you have Netflix or you have Twitter. So for Twitter, the data is huge. Now, if you want to prepare a report or a dashboard for Twitter, the best application among uh, so between Tableau and Power BI, definitely it is Tableau, guys. Because when you have huge data, in that case, Tableau works really nice. But we have small and medium enterprises. For them, Power BI is the best application. Yeah, you can't expect every company to have data like Twitter. So we have a lot of companies where they have data, but not equivalent to Twitter. In that case, Power BI is working very effectively for them guys. That is the reason now people started migrating from Tableau to Power BI. So this is the major reason why you see a lot of opportunities on Power BI these days rather than Tableau. Tableau is still there guys. It has its own craze. But certainly large companies are still using Tableau. But most of the organizations are slowly migrating their dashboards from Tableau to Power BI. Somebody asked this question. I hope uh, I answered it. Yes, sir. Cleared, sir. Power BI, can we send with the uh, Outlook? Can we? Uh, Power BI, Visual Basic. Can we send with Outlook? Without SharePoint uh, or what do you mean by sensor? Uh, what the mail or dashboard? only mail dashboard. We can do that. I mean, you can save your uh, Power BI file 
and you can uh, send it using Outlook. Absolutely, you can do that. Same like Excel file, you can uh, attach it and you can send it. Oh. Oh. So, but uh, then in that case, there's no major difference between your Excel file and Power BI file. Wherein if you use Power BI service, then it makes a lot of difference. Okay. That outlook because can you be publish it on a both the... place. This will be open Absolutely in the, you can uh, open. mobile also. Yeah, that's the best thing what we have, sir. We have that compatibility. Yes. Uh, especially higher management, they don't have to sit at laptop and uh, they can't view their dashboards. Now, on the go, even if they want to view their dashboard on mobile, still they can do it. It is compatible with, I mean, we have mobile version also. The dashboard can be viewed on mobile. So. Oh. And the dashboards prepared on uh, Power BI, can we mm -hmm. transfer that data to uh, tra into a PPT file? We can do that, but... When you have a Power BI dashboard, uh, why do we again go back to PowerPoint? Okay. But like if, if we have a requirement to uh, present in a PPT. Uh, absolutely, you can do that. I mean, okay. you can uh, copy the visualization and you can keep it in uh, PowerPoint. You can do that. But uh, like the like, slicers and all which we and, uh, uh, insert, will they, will they work like real-time basis if we want to show the data? No. Because uh, Slicer is related to either Excel or Power BI. So we don't have that functionality in PowerPoint. So it does not. Okay. Because that's an application specific feature, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't have Slicer feature in PowerPoint. So that doesn't work now. So it, be it becomes a stack image. I mean, for example, let's say I created a small uh, uh, chart in Excel. I can copy paste it in PowerPoint, but you can't use Slicer in PowerPoint. What is the meaning of Slicer? Slicer, sir, that's a another form of filter only. Okay. But uh, that's an interactive filter. Yeah, let me quickly show you what is that Slicer is. So here I opened a small dashboard which we have in Excel. Now, this is what I meant by slicer, sir. Can you see year, month name, product category, and product subcategory? Actually, these are filters, but interactive filters. Now, if I select one particular here, year here, then the charts will be changed here. So let me do that. If I click on 2009, can you see this? All the charts have been changed. Now, for example, let's let me click on furniture. So this is what we call a slicer. So these are interactive filters. Uh, this will come to in the Power BI, na? automatically. Yeah, you can do that. You can use slicers in uh, Power BI also. This is Excel, sir. We created this dashboard in Excel only. Oh, okay. Yeah, any other questions, guys? Yeah, we have so many things to discuss. I'm not here to teach you guys. So we are going to have a discussion. So we are going to implement certain things in Power BI. We will discuss them. So uh, don't uh, misunderstand me. I'm not here to teach you. So we will discuss them. I want to have a discussion with you. So let's make it more interactive. What are the questions you have? You are free to ask. In integration portal, yes, come the SAP to Power BI without 
uh, dump from the SAP, is it possible to power BI? Absolutely, we can do that, sir. You can connect Power BI to SAP. That's also possible. Okay. Uh, but we can do that in my, uh, many ways. Even in that case, uh, we can use query languages. Even uh, business objects, to some extent, you can use that. Mm. That's what I was saying. So here, when you come here, you can connect it to all these things, sir. Can you see this SAP HANA database? Yes. Yeah, absolutely can connect to all these things. Already gateways are here. If you feel like uh, you're not Problem able to- SAP, we cannot be connected. Sorry? With HANA only. I, I didn't Normal get you. Can you say it? ERP system, Normally, SAP is not able to connect only HANA. So, because here, whenever you want to work with any report, sir, basically we work with OLAP data. Mm. So, when it comes to, I mean, I don't uh, uh, encourage anyone to work with production system, sir. Because in production system, the, the data will be fluctuating. So in that case, it's always uh, better to go with uh, data warehouse. I, I hope I'm making sense. But if it is fluctuating also, it will be reflected in the Power BI, no? Sorry? Uh, the, uh, the data which is fluctuated also, it will be affected in the Power BI chart, no? But uh, that will affect the decision making, sir. For example, let's say you prepared a report based on production system. But what happened after two hours, maybe the users, end users have changed the data. Yes. Now let's imagine uh, maybe in next one hour, higher management, they have a review meeting. So now based on the report, what you shared, they made some strategies. But after that strategy meeting, the data got changed. Now whatever the decisions they have taken, they, they will go wrong? No, when they opened the data, it will be, it will be reflected in the SAP. So it will be updated the from the database. Huh? That's what I'm saying. So meanwhile, there will be a time gap, right? Hmm. Of course. So, uh, for example, railway station, the station uh, display, it will be showing uh, this train will be coming this time. It, if it is late, means it will be uh, same time. It will not be shown. Sure, but uh, when you want to update the database, generally we run the jobs at a particular time intervals. Am I correct, sir? No. Yeah. In that case, definitely there will be delay to update the data. Okay. Let's so imagine. Here, here period, the data will not I'll get know. updated automatically. See, I, I'm talking about OLAP, not about OLTP. I'm not talking about production system. I'm talking about data warehouse. So at particular time intervals, we move the data from production system to uh, uh, data warehouses. Am I correct? We don't do it very frequent. We do it maybe like uh, with a time gap of four hours or maybe at the end of the day, we move all the data from production system to warehouse. So For example, if you prepare the book, yeah, sorry. For example, yeah. uh, in my personal accounts are in SBA, HDFC, something that's having. So funds uh -huh. flow, if I want to see a day, end of the day or anything, if I want to see what is the funds flow from the yesterday date, end of the day, or uh, daily, uh, I want to see means I will be uh, linked with the Power BI. No? You can do that, sir. I'm not saying that we can't, but it is not oh. advisable to go with production system, sir. Even uh, when you say you want to link, yeah, at the end of the day, they will settle or they move the entire data to data warehouse. Based on data warehouse only, you are getting your report, not from production system, sir. 
But definitely data you can have like means that. Sorry? Data warehouse means? Uh, that's where we store the final data. Okay. Okay. So in SQL language, we call that as OLAP, Online Analytical Processing. And a production system we call as OLTP, sir. But you are saying uh, if I want to open any uh, uh, wrong uh, time, it will be reflected in the old database. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Hmm. As you mentioned about the train ticket, sir. Yes. So even IRCTC, uh, they move the whole data from production system to data warehouse every day midnight, sir. From 11 right. to 12. Yeah, yeah. So they move the whole so data from production be, system. Yes. Ticket will not be booked uh, 20 minutes. Absolutely. Because they are moving the data. In that time, they restrict the users not to conduct any transactions. Hmm. So if we are giving the time uh, example, uh, uh, today is the fifth day. Uh, every day night at 12 o'clock, uh, pull the data from the uh, something uh, Excel or something SAP. Mm -hmm. Is it possible? Yeah, we can do that. Absolutely, okay. you can do that. Okay. Otherwise, Obviously. we can give the any uh, any uh, timing for suppose example. Uh, now it is ten fifty. The before mm -hmm. 50, ten minutes we can say. We can do that. Time. We can set all those uh, time limits. Okay. Okay. And one more thing, the uh, yeah, from please. the uh, from uh, outlook we are getting from the. Uh, from banks, a PDF a bank statements, automatically it will be fetched from the other and uh, use up report from Power BI. I didn't get you. Can you say it again? Uh, can we say in Telugu? Yeah, please. Uh, for suppose, for example, Outlook is automatic. System nunchi auto triggering on the banks nunchi power uh, account statements. Okay. Every day account statements PDF or something. Okay. Our PDF lane funds flow no manam check say alante manam Power mm -hmm. BI ki link say acha manam without any intervention every day. Absolutely. So first you need to store you the PDFs at a particular location. Yeah, you can send those. Mail automatically it will not be take mail. There, there are two things you need to do, sir. First, you have to keep all the PDFs at a particular place. From that place, we redirect Power BI to pick those files from that location. It we, You can create that. Okay. Because it's an attachment, right? So yes. the attachment has to be stored at a particular place. It's a password. Even. Uh, you have to give that password, sir. Okay. If the file is protected, it can't read it. So you have to give the password also. Okay. Okay, right. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Sir, will AA destroy the power by jobs in future? Uh sir, your voice is not here. Can you say it again? Will AA destroy the power by jobs? Okay, that's a, another interesting question, sir. So, I don't know how many of you heard this. We have a basic feature called Copilot. Uh, even in office applications, guys. Microsoft is still rolling out that. So now, even if you want to work with AI, somebody has to sit and they have to give the prompt, guys. It is not being done automatically. 
So if you give the prompt, then it will give you the response. So at least we need some users to give those prompts. Yeah, even in Excel also, we have some interesting feature. Let me quickly show you this, guys. With that, uh, I'll stop here for today. So I'm using uh, Office 365. Now, this is the data what I have. Yeah. So there's a feature called Analyze Data in Office 365, guys. So if you click on this, discover more about your data. Analyze Data looks for pattern in your data that it can use to create intelligent and personalized suggestions. So let me click on Analyze Data. Yeah, now what it is doing is, it is reading this data, guys. Now let me ask you a question here. Gender and, sorry, gender and employee count. Can you see this? It has understood this data and it is giving the answer here. It is saying that there are 871 male employees and female employees, 266. Now, so it can't do it automatically, guys. You have to give this question, then it generated answer. So if you ask me, are we going to lose jobs because of AI? I say no, sir. But you should be able to leverage AI for your activities. If you are not in that position, definitely you will lose your job. Okay, somebody is saying something in chat. Okay. Uh, Niharika, I'll connect with you on a personal window map. So I'll give you a call once we are done with the session. Yeah, any further questions, guys? Instead of macro, uh, the Power BI is useful. Uh, can you say it again, sir? Instead of macro, mm -hmm. uh, Power BI is useful or a macro? Okay, to answer your question, basically we use macros to automate. Yes. Yeah, so I don't say that you can replace macros with uh, Power Query, but most of the tasks you can handle with Power Query. But macros are quite powerful. Yeah, I say like 70% 70 to 80% tasks can be handled with Power Query in place of macros. But still there is a gap of 20 to 30%. If you want to automate those tasks, there you have to go with VBSM. But major chunk, almost like 70% of your work, uh, you can replace macros with Power Query that you can do. Okay. Yep. No further questions. I'll uh, stop here for today, guys. Yeah, I have, I have one question. So, do yeah, do please. we get uh, free of cost uh, for Power BI? Yeah, that's free, sir. Absolutely, you can go to Microsoft. Uh, let me come here. Actually, it is asking uh, Office uh, mail ID. Is uh, I'm I'm not getting I'm not getting uh, free of using with uh, mail ID personal mail ID. No, you don't have to give the mail ID, sir. You don't have to sign in. Yeah, you can download and uh, you can start using it. So, what for example, mean? let's say Power BI desktop download. Hmm? Can you see this? You can download it and you can start using it. But if you sign in, uh, we have some advantages. But even without signing in also, you can work. So for practice purpose, so, so. For office purpose. Uh -huh. Sorry, practice purpose. Practice purpose, you can absolutely use it. Hmm. Okay, sir. 
So this is the whole journey, guys. Yeah, indeed, uh, Power BI was released as a standalone application in 2015. Sir, will you share the recording video after completing the class? Every day we share it. Okay. Re recordings will be shared and even we share a couple of files also. That is the reason I showed you this folder. This entire folder will be shared. Shared with you, sir. Okay. Is it a lifetime access, sir? Uh, don't worry about the access, sir. That's absolutely fine. We can uh, definitely connect on it. That, that's not a big thing. Don't worry about that. Okay. Actually, uh, so what is the package for Power BI employees if we get after uh, completing the Power BI? So exactly what is the package for that one? Sir, if I give you honest answer, mm. right now we don't have openings. We have very less openings, sir. Because most of the MNCs are not hiring now. Almost okay. like for the last one to one and a half year, hiring is not happening. Mm -hmm. So let me not comment on it, sir. Okay. It's an honest answer. So I don't want to comment on it. Sir, I guess in all the fields, sir, uh, there is like, you know, uh, no hiring is happening now, sir. Not yeah, only in terms of like, uh, for we but in all the fields, we don't have any, any openings. Absolutely, but somehow, uh, analytics mm -hmm. is in a better position, sir. At least, at least, uh, minimum hiring is happening in data analytics. But in okay. other fields and and in other domains, they are going for, uh, uh, I mean, layoffs. Okay. So you can expect some hiring in data analytics. Sir. I'm not saying only for BI. Then, sir. Sir, one more I... question. Yes, the sales tools and R Python are the BI tools or other tools? I'm not sure. Sir, sir R, R and Python are programming languages and Salesforce mm -hmm. is a CRM application. Sir. Okay. Yeah, depends on your organization, you use it. If uh, your organization deals with uh, B2C sales or B2B sales. Sorry, somebody is said something. So in that case, uh, you use a uh, CRM application, sir. But if you are not into uh, sales activity kind of thing, so they, generally they don't use the CRMs. But in data analytics, if you want to go with the uh, statistical modeling and if you want to create predictive models in that case you must use uh, either r programming or python mm, okay okay thank you sir can i have a quick question actually uh, it's not about yes. the problem yeah please yeah, uh, are we going to expect the same timings or is there any change on the timings actually? Uh, I mean, can we make it like 9 to 10.30 or maybe uh, 9 to 11? <laughs> actually, I'm from Canada, so I, okay. it's so late for me. <laughs> so I was expecting uh, like... Uh, so early only actually so that's why i was checking i was checking yeah. okay uh let's do one thing so today our team will check with everyone so okay. even i'm okay to take the session early also if everyone is okay even we okay. can start the session at eight o'clock also that's absolutely fine for me okay that will be great like yeah uh, I mean, if everyone is okay yeah. yeah it's a quick heads up to everyone guys so our team will reach out to you uh if you let let us know your convenient time even we can start the session at eight o'clock also so that uh, you can finish up the course little early uh, you can uh, carry on with your uh, daily activities yeah otherwise it was so uh, late for me that that's why i was asking this yeah. question sure definitely i can understand that yeah thank you you're welcome okay any other further questions, guys?
if we don't have any much knowledge about any uh, such a, a program language as C, C++, plus, plus something, is it possible to continue the Power BI? Uh, for now, I say yes, but uh, there is a condition, sir. Maybe if you are at mid-level of your career, definitely you must have some familiarity with programming language. That could be any programming language. Yeah, because that's a mandate if you want to really progress in your career. Sir. Which languages is required? Sir, so these days, I suggest Python. No, I suggest Python. Python. Okay. Yeah. Because most of the automation things are happening with Python. Even in data analytics, also Python is playing a crucial role. So I would suggest to start programming with Python, sir. And Python is really easy. Because my background is MCOM MBA. So I don't know about yeah. much knowledge about any software, anything. Uh, working in the past okay. 23 years in the SAP. Oh, okay. Sir, if you are familiar with SAP, you can easily work with programming, sir. That's absolutely fine. Even for that so, matter, I am... I think you the if conditions in the Excel uh, frequently. That is not a problem. Yeah, but it, uh, uh, it's not that simple, sir. So even uh, first you have to understand oops, you have to understand uh, variables, you have to understand loops, all these things you must have a familiarity if you want to get into programming, sir. Okay. Yeah, but mm -hmm. if, the, if you are really, I mean, if you are very serious to make your career in data analytics, uh, mm -hmm. you have to focus on Python also, sir. Oh. Okay. Okay. So it's already eleven three. I think uh, for some people it may be getting late. If you don't have any further questions, uh, we'll stop here, guys. We'll start the sessions from Monday. Uh, our team will reach out to you and they'll check the convenient time and uh, they'll update you the timing, guys. Okay. Done, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome, guys. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for your time, guys. Uh, I wish you a happy weekend. See you on Monday. Happy weekend. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Take care. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you.